three constantly high slackers, a dead-end telemarketing job, and a whole lot of horrible people. Workaholics was one of the best shows about a group of dudes doing a lot of nothing. Now that Blake, Adam, and Durs have said goodbye to Rancho Cucamonga, it's time to take a look back at everything that made Workaholics possible. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be first. Come together. A couple of the Workaholics creators have been making each other laugh since they were little kids. Kyle Newichek, the guy who plays drug dealer Carl on the show, and Blake Anderson grew up together in Northern California. Their first collaboration was an elementary school era comic called Funyun Protectors, about anthropomorphic Funyun snack rings who were also superheroes. They started performing together in high school and after graduation moved to Orange County to attend community college, which is where they met Adam Devine in an improv class. Anders Holm joined the group when he met Divine at Second City in Los Angeles. The next step, making web videos. Mail Order Comedy Back in 2006, they launched their Mail Order Comedy sketch group, which was fairly successful, even before they landed on TV. They had a bunch of comedy shows, did tours, and were basically going places. Among their creative YouTube ventures and their own website, they created two MySpace-exclusive comedy shows. Remember MySpace? If you do, you're probably old. Hi. It's Jasmine and I'm on MySpace. I know we've never met before, but we should meet because we live close to one another. Is this a scam? Once upon a time, it was the Facebook of its day, so it hosted a lot of exclusive media, including music, comics, and even web series, like the ones the Workaholics guys did. Special Delivery was a prank show, because every comic has to get the prank stuff out of their system at one point or another. Crossbows and Mustaches was an action comedy show that combined two of the finest things ever created by mankind. Of course, MySpace couldn't last forever, so the mail order comedy team went on to make bigger and better things, experimenting with the ideas that would eventually become workaholics. The Flop House. While taping the first season of Workaholics, Adam and Blake were convinced that the show was going to be a flop. To save money for the rainy days ahead, they actually lived in the disgusting party house where the show was taped, while Anders lived in a real home with his girlfriend. Divine and Anderson moved out when the show's success enabled them to afford proper shelter, but Anderson says the old place has become a flop house where their friends and family have crashed. Anderson's younger brother lived there for a while, as did Divine's best friend from high school. Nevertheless, Divine says the place remained infested with giant newborn-sized rats. There was one, like, 24-hour period that we killed something like 18 rats. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the night of many kills. Of many kills. Yeah. It's always sunny at Rancho, a show about a bunch of terrible people doing horrible things. Of course Workaholics is called and it's always sunny in Philadelphia ripoff, which is basically a Seinfeld ripoff anyhow. Workaholics has been called that since before it even aired, and that was by the creators. Even better, they said it's straight to the cast of Sunny. According to a movie web interview with Blake, before the show even aired, the cast of Workaholics drunkenly rushed up to the cast of Sunny at a Comic-Con party to tell them that their upcoming show was basically a ripoff. For what it's worth, the Sunny crew reacted positively, and if there was ever any doubt, Sunny's Glenn Howerton cast it aside on Twitter. Straight out of Mordor, the season one episode, Muscle I'd Like to Flex, begins with a stylishly shot rap video sequence in which the guys perform a song about being wizards while dressed in long robes, beards, and floppy hats. Don't make this wizard mad, don't make this wizard pissed, I could kill a hill giant with the flick of my wrist. In the plot of the show, they're rehearsing for a performance at a renaissance fair, but the wizard rap shtick isn't new. Under the name The Wizards, they recorded and released a full album of wizard rap called Purple Magic in 2009. In fact, they wanted to pitch a show to Comedy Central about gangsta wizards before a network executive told them to go with their other idea, a show about slackers instead. Pong Gone Wrong in 2011, Blake Anderson lived out a real-life event that sounds like it could have happened on an episode of Workaholics. At a wild house party in Los Angeles, he raised the stakes in a game of beer pong by attempting to dunk a ping-pong ball by jumping off a roof. The whole thing was captured on video and ghoulishly sold to TMZ. Hey, Blake! <laughs> The accident resulted in a pretty serious spine fracture. Well, he broke his back, for those yeah, of you that uh, yeah. don't Napped it. Whoopsies! Now he's, got the, Whoops -a -doozle. Uh, he's got that, like, what? Dr. Octagon spine now. I do. Anderson underwent back surgery, but made a full recovery and didn't miss a single episode of playing a character who would have done the same thing. 
Arrested Development. One of the most surprising cameos on Workaholics came courtesy of Mitch Hurwitz, TV writer and creator of Arrested Development. After the first season of Workaholics aired, he contacted the troupe and told them they were doing great work and that he'd like to be a part of it in any way. They offered Hurwitz the opportunity to write an episode, but he wanted a chance to act. So they wrote the part of Cool Eric, the human resources guy, for him. I love people, to say that another way. Uh, I love people. That one's got a little more fun to it. Hurwitz later repaid the favor by casting the three main stars of Workaholics in cameo roles as airline employees in the 2013 revival of Arrested Development. The End Despite the fact that Comedy Central probably would have let the series live forever, Anderson, Holm, Devine, and Nuacek all decided that the seventh season of Workaholics would be the last. In a statement, the crew thanked Comedy Central, its executives, and the show's fans, quote, for turning us from boys to men. It was an incredible run, but we've decided to leave on a high note. Get it? End quote. While the show has ended, the team's collaborative efforts have not. They're working on an action comedy film called Game Over Man for Netflix, and the conclusion of their show will leave them more time to focus on bigger projects. Written by Anders Holm, the movie has been described as an action comedy akin to Die Hard in a Hotel, which honestly sounds pretty fresh. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.